All of us want to make money in the stock markets. We all aspire so much and then the reality bites. 90% of the people lose money in the stock markets. 90%. This is because we normally rely on the stock market recommendations from friends, from the stock market gurus who come on uh, the business news channels, relatives, social media platform, telegram channels and so on. Normally these stock recommendations and tips do not work in the long term. Let me introduce myself. I'm Himanshu Jain. I'm a chartered accountant by education, having qualified in November 2004. I started my career with McKinsey as a strategy consultant, then worked with PwC for a couple of years in their banking and financial services vertical, again as a strategy consultant. Uh, in 2009, Manoj and I, we started a boutique financial services firm, ARC Financial Services, wherein we help raise funds for the corporates through debt and through equity. Manoj and I, we are also the co-founders of the Wall Street School, wherein we teach and train people in stock markets, in financial modeling, valuations, FRM and CFA. This Learn Stock Markets from Scratch series from the Wall Street School is a sincere attempt to teach you all the practical aspects of stock markets right from the basic level to an advanced level so that you become better investors at your end. It contains six videos right from the basic level and every video will become a little more granular as you move along. So I would suggest you and encourage you to watch each and every video to get the maximum benefit out of it. This particular video, we are going to cover one, why the stock markets actually exist. Two, how much of money you can make from the stock markets. Three, the common mistakes made by the common people in the stock markets. In the end, I'm also going to connect how the success in the stock markets is also connected to success in cricket and in Bollywood as well. So let's get started. What are the different liquid investments you can make in India? You can talk of gold, talk of silver, you talk of fixed deposits, you talk of PPF, you talk of stocks, mutual funds. Let's go back a little. Let's go back a little dated. Let's talk of 40 years back. The quantum of returns which the gold, the silver, the PPFs, the stock markets have given over a period of time. Let's try to analyze this data. If we try to analyze this data, and I have this data from 31st March 1981 onwards till 31st March 2020. So that's a good 40 year of data history. So in the last 40 years from 31st March 1981 till 31st March 2020, gold which was at 1670 rupees per 10 grams till 31st March 2020 when it was 43,251. In the last 40 years, gold has given an annualized return of 8.7%. Silver has given an annualized return of almost 7.1% over the last 40 years. Fixed deposits. Few years from now, fixed deposit rates were like really big, like they were 9, 10, 12%. This is unheard of right now. But having said that, in the last 40 years, fixed deposits have also given a CAGR return of almost 8.85%. Provident funds, the government backed securities, they have given a CAGR annualized returns of almost 9.67%. And in the last 40 years, BSE Sensex, which was around 173 rupees, and on 31st March, when India was hit by pandemic, when the stock markets really crashed, when it was around 30,000, and right now, by the time this goes to shoot, uh, Sensex is around 50,000. But assuming 30,000, BSE Sensex, has given a CAGR of almost 14.08% every year. That means every year, historically, stock markets have given a CAGR, compounded annual growth rate of almost 14%. 
let me go a little more let's talk of the last 30 years the major events which have happened in the last 30 years from 1991 onwards in 1991 there was an assassination of the former prime minister of india in 1992 the Harshad Mehta scam broke out. In, nine, in 2000, the tech bubble happened. In 2001, the parliament attack happened. In 2001, September 11 attack happened in the US. In 2008, there was a militant attack which happened in Mumbai. In 2008-9, there was a subprime crisis in US. In 2013, there was recession. In European Union in 2016 there was demonetization 2020 there was COVID all these events happened in the last 30 years despite all this despite all this the BSC Sensex gave almost a 14% returns in the last 30 years we saw it uh, for last 40 years there was almost a 14% return last 20 years almost a 14% return last 20 years also again a 14% return last 10 years BSC Sensex has given almost a 10% return and this is last year if you compare this data to what it is right now when when this goes to shoot you know BSC Sensex is around 50,000 the returns must be around 12% and this has all happened despite all these events which have actually happened. Now, what actually is a stock or a share that even I always have a fancy about? You're watching this video because you have some interest in stocks. Now, what actually is a stock? Now, shares or a stock, it represents the ownership of a company to the extent of its contribution. When an individual buys a share in a company, they become one of the owners. For example, if I buy 100 shares of Reliance, I become an owner of Reliance shares to the extent of 100 shares. Okay, so I take an ownership of the company to the extent of the value which I have invested in Reliance or for that matter, any other company, an ITC or a Reliance. Now, there are two reasons people invest in the stock markets. One, you want a price appreciation that if I bought any stock at 100 rupees today, I want that price to appreciate over and above the 100 rupees, 100, 110, 120, 200. You know, that is the gradual aspiration level that everybody has. Second, many of us invest in the markets because the companies give good dividends. Now, what are dividends? Now, every year, the company earns some profits. So from that profit, they try to reward the equity shareholders of that company in terms of dividends that is an expectation which any shareholder would want to have when they invest any in any company now why does the stock market actually exist why what is the purpose of the stock markets being there now stock markets serve many purposes the most important being the ability of the company to raise capital for investment and for expansion. Second, without stock markets, many countries would not be as developed as they are right now. It also helps for anyone, people like you and me, to be a part of the growth story of that company in case we understand that company. Suppose we take the we take the shares, we buy the shares to the extent of our capital, the company grows, our wealth will eventually grow over a period of time. So this is why the stock markets exist and what India was 30 years back, what it is right now and what it could be onwards also. There is an element of development that is expected to be there. And there are a lot of companies which might become much bigger than what they are today. So in case we invest in those companies, the intent is in the case the company grows, our money will also grow because we have also been a some portion of ownership that we have earned in those companies by way of our investing in those stocks. But having said that, 
white stocks that is where the stock market visit program from the wall street school is there which will help you learn the basics of investing in stock markets stock picking and stock valuations and why it is important because in terms of total stocks in india if you go to the bse website right now as of now around 4260 stocks are available which are actively traded which are actively traded in the stock markets a lot of people put money in mutual funds you might be aware or you might not be aware that almost 2500 mutual fund schemes are there 4000 plus stocks 2500 plus mutual fund schemes which are there this might surprise you and the lot of people who give stock tips to you a uh, lot of tips are available you just do a google right now i mean uh, just just pause this video just do a, you know google for the number of stock tips which are available when i recorded this you know i did a snapshot of it 28 crore hits 28 crore plus hits i got from google with respect to the number of people who want to give stock markets tips more than 28 crores wow and let's talk of the actual number of dollar millionaires who are there in india in 2020 who had investable wealth of more than 7.5 crore dollar 1 million right this might surprise you 28 crore stock tips in in google search that we just saw you, you try at your end as well actual number of dollar millionaires in india is around 2.6 lakhs only and does this does not include the people who have actually made money in the stock markets this might include a lot of professionals a lot of businessmen a lot of people in the service sector also and not just only the stock markets so the point i'm trying to make here is we have to back our own research and not look into the noise which is available so much of noise which is available in the stock markets recommendations and what is our ecosystem of stock picking where do we uh, get our stock recommendations and tips from from just visualize uh, you, you'll get a lot of stock recommendations from uh, the the daily tv analysts or anchors who come on the different business news channels uh, who would give you around 15 20 recommendations on every single day every single day you talk of uh, daily twitter heroes a lot of twitter heroes are there who would give around five to sto seven stock recommendations almost daily basis you talk of uh, the telegram channel you know uh, it gives around 10 to 15 stock recommendations almost on a daily basis you talk of uh, the daily business newspapers every business newspaper would give around three to four stock recommendations every single day two common people like you and i have so much money and so much patience to invest in every single stock every single tip which is given to us on a daily basis your and my money is limited so remember friends because our money is limited and despite the fact that the bse sensex has given a return of 14 percent almost in the last 40 years in the last 30 years in the last 20 years in the last 10 years 90 percent of the people have lost money in the stock markets 90 percent and not cooking these numbers i, I can I, you know i was reading an article uh, in which Nitin Kamath, uh, he's the founder of Zeroda. Zeroda is the largest broking firm in India. So he was telling that in terms of the profitable trades, uh, the number of profitable versus losing trades in an yearly period in India is not more than 1 to 2 percent. And this is what the largest broking house says that just 1 to 2 percent of the people uh have actually made money as traders on their broking platform and despite all the things which i have just mentioned to you despite the so-called tips and the recommendations which are available uh 
every single day on as many uh, you know different channels and sources now remember this is warren buffett he is the, perhaps the most famous and the uh, most successful value investor in the world he had two rules with respect to investing in the stock markets remember those rules rule number 1 and let's keep this as an underlying principle never lose money never ever rule number 2 let's not forget rule number 1 that's the bottom line never lose money and let's not forget rule number 1 now having said that the sea is rough the going gets tough but that is not the excuse for you and i have to use all the opportunities that come your and my way so that the dreams and the aspirations that you and i have for ourselves don't go astray i know god is there he will take care and ultimately success would be your and mine that is for sure but for that success to happen and for god to take care we got to learn things we got to work hard towards it i remember alexander elder he is a very famous uh, uh, value investor he says that the markets the stock markets do not know that we exist we can do nothing to influence it we can only control our behavior we can only control our knowledge and then there is money to be made then there is a possibility of we being amongst the 10 percentile of the people who have actually made money in the stock markets or who could actually make money in the stock markets let's take some examples let's talk of yes bank now now uh, there was a tweet in 2018 by rana kapoor he is the promoter of uh, yes bank first world promoter and he sent a tweet saying that i will eventually bequeath my yes bank promoter shares to my three daughters and subsequently to the children with a request in my will stating not to sell a single share as diamonds are forever hira hai sada ke liye and these uh, shares are invaluable to me so if i'm an investor i think and i would feel that in that the promoter of a company is saying that his shares are like diamonds so why not i also buy diamonds to the extent of what my capacities uh, you know give the control for so so i also try to get a buy in for myself because diamonds are available the promoter is saying that there are diamonds available and from 2018 from the time of this tweet you see the stock price movement of yes bank so here you go so this is the time of the tweet and then it is just a one way fall just one way this fall made yes bank a no bank and there were lot of broking houses i'm talking of 2018 lot of broking houses you talk of georgit icici nirmal bank jm financial everybody was giving a price target a price target which was much upwards of what what the current price of the company was at that point of time everybody there were 32 research reports which were available for yes bank at that time not a single sell recommendation not a single one and come 2019 what the smart investors were doing at that time rakesh junjunwala perhaps the most famous uh, investor in india indian stock markets he bought 0.51% stake in yes bank uh, this is november 2019 so if i am an investor and i know that a person of the stature of rakesh junjunwala investing in yes bank i should also because he would have done his own set of research and then come 2020 the forever diamonds are sold forever and rana kapoor and their family they sold their entire stake in yes bank hira sada ke liye tha right and here you go but 
but the story is not over yet what 2020 march 2020 what the smart broking houses were saying at that time yes bank was trading around 55 rupees so jp morgan they gave it a price target of 1 rupee from 55 rupees 1 rupee and then i feel if a company of the stature of jp morgan says that the price will be 1 rupee oh god let me sell it immediately so that whatever i can get i can fetch let the losses be there no problems but let me sell because a jp morgan is saying so and this creates a lot of panic selling in the stock markets in a particular stock and then in the price movement post 6th march 2020 for yes bank here you go so for the next 50 days just one day after jp morgan gave the price target of 1 rupee for yes bank see the price movement it moved upwards from 16 rupees to upwards of 60 rupees and then made a fall but because of statements like these coming from the companies as uh, reputed like a jp morgan or for that matter any other reputed firms uh, creates panic selling and this creates wealth erosion for 90 percent of the people and that is the reason most of the people lose money in the stock markets panic selling right not backing their own research I'll give you another example in november 2018 gautam singhania uh, he is the promoter of uh, raymond's uh, he sent a tweet saying that at 20.4 times its two year forward earnings raymond's valuations are inexpensive and attractive for going long a very positive outlook from the money control research team so the promoter of the company is saying that my company is cheap why don't you put money in the company because it is it is very attractive for going long this is on record 5th november 2018 tweet by gautam singhania and from the time of this tweet you see the stock price movement of uh, raymond's so here you go so it was uh, 748 moved to 800 and then see the fall of the company remember friends when the management is worried about the stock movement more than the actual performance of the company try to maintain social distancing from the stock okay so remember uh, in 2020 there was janta curfew which was announced the first day before before the actual lockdown happened janta curfew was announced on a friday uh, to be uh, and this was supposed to happen on a sunday you know from morning seven o'clock till uh, evening uh, seven o'clock by the prime minister uh, mr modi and uh, then the actual janta curfew happened and nobody had any inclination that uh, what lies ahead is 21 days of lockdown right the lockdown actually uh, happened from 24th March midnight. 24th March was a Tuesday. Okay, so 24th March was a Tuesday at 8 p.m. Mr. Modi, our Prime Minister, he came on the channels and he told that from midnight of that Tuesday, they will India is going to go for a complete lockdown. Absolutely, all business activities shut and if you are an investor in the markets in the stock markets you would feel that everything is going to get over now right? india is going to go for a complete lockdown the companies are going to go for bizarre losses let me sell everything let me sell everything with the first light of the next day as soon as the markets open so 25th of march 2020 the first day of the lockdown when india was completely shut completely shut this is how the stock markets behaved so you talk of 25th march this is the first day of the lockdown 
the markets were up 7% next day the markets were up 5% next day the markets were flat the next day markets were down by 5% next day the markets were up by 4% the next day markets were down by 4% now who could predict these short term upswings and downswings and upswings and downswings nobody knows nobody can and, and during the period of lockdown the bsc sensex grew from 25,981 to 32,720 no business activity and bsc sensex gave a return of 25% how unpredictable in a short term the markets can be and despite the fact there was no business activity happening in india remember friends again warren buffett he says very candidly he uh, this uh, this this uh, thought by him sums up the essence of short term trading he says and i quote calling someone who trades actively in the markets an investor is like calling someone who repeatedly engages in one night stand as romantic now see if you can guess this person uh, in this picture which i'm just going to show you this is from the amir khan starrer movie sarfarosh do you know this person uh, you know this uh, this uh, person who is encircled in red or do you know this uh, scene from the movie munna bhai mbbs it was released in 2003 this thief who was caught by sunil dat this was an unknown nawazuddin siddiqui now we all know who nawazuddin siddiqui is today that time nobody knew that this was an unknown nawazuddin siddiqui at that time however when mr hirani was directing him in the movie he thought that okay he is a good actor but he had a cameo role and uh, it was all over and all lost but even he didn't visualize that he could become such a big actor that he is today same thing with stocks good companies just like good talent will eventually shine they have to now every year berkshire hathaway this is warren buffett's company uh, they come out with annual uh, annual letters to the shareholders so in their 2014 letters to the shareholders they said that for those investors who plan to sell within a year or two after their purchase i can offer no assurances whatever the entry price movement of the general stock markets during such abbreviated periods will likely be far more important in determining your results than the concomitant change in the intrinsic value of your shares as benjamin graham uh, he is again uh, he is the guru of warren buffett uh, he is also a very famous value investor he said that in the short term the market is a voting machine in the long term it acts as a weighing machine so he says that i have no way to predict the market movements in a short time time period but over a period of time i know that markets will eventually rise and shine let me take you through a cricketing example here now uh, see if you remember 50 over world cup in 2007 which was held in west indies this was the indian cricket team at that time this is was the 15 member indian cricket team and this was the team which made a first round exit from it it broke a lot of hearts all of us in india it broke our hearts but this was the team which went out from the very first round and in 2015 uh, 2011 i beg your pardon uh the world cup was held in india and this was the team and the ones who are in yellow the ones who are in yellow in both 2007 and 2011 were the ones who played the world cup final match against sri lanka they were a part of the playing 11 out of these eight players out of the 11 uh, you know out of the playing 11 now what changed the players were the same the talent was the same they were made a first round exit in 2007 in 2015 india was the world champion good talent 
will eventually shine over a period of time, but nobody can time it. Same thing happens with the stock markets. Remember, think about a sapling. Right amount of water, manure and care, it will grow into a healthy tree. Similarly, growing sales, improving margins, reducing debt, increasing profitability and ethical management. In case we are able to find out these attributes about a particular company, these companies will eventually and surely shine over a period of time. These companies are bound to grow. They will. Now, to conclude this, uh, let's try to understand how much of money can be made in the stock markets. So I will just open an Excel here. Now see this, friends. Let's assume an initial corpus of 10 lakhs. You know, hypothetically, that we have an initial corpus of 10 lakh rupees. And suppose we are 25 years of age. And let's assume we have an, in, we have an investing life of almost 30 years. So by the time we are 55 years of age and on an initial corpus of 10 lakhs, how much can it become? So if I have this 10 lakhs of corpus today, here, assuming a fixed deposit rate of 8%, so this 10 lakhs into 1 plus 8%, and I'm fixing it, will become 10 lakh 80,000. You know, simple mathematics. So 10 lakh 80,000. Next year, it will keep on growing. 11 lakh 64,000. So by the time it is 30 years, so this 10 lakhs of corpus becomes 1 crore. 1 crore in 30 years from now. Okay, assuming 8% rate of interest, which normally has been the expectation that the fixed deposit would have given. You know, but the fixed deposit rates have gone really down as of now. But we also saw in the first part of the video how much returns have the stock markets given in the last 40 years, in the last 30 years, in the last 20 years, the returns have been close to 14%. So if I were to just do simply this, see that 10 lakh of corpus would have been worth 5 crores. 5 crores without any brain simple investing in bsc sensex no companies no stocks nothing just bsc sensex and that's it if i was in 1991 10 lakhs invested at that time would be worth would be worth 5 crore rupees today right 30 years back but let you and i be a little more ambitious let's try let's try to do our research well, bit of prudence, bit of Hawkeye, and let you and I be a little more ambitious, and let's try to double our money every three years. So if I want to double my money every three years, let me find out the realistic rate of return, which is possible. So go to data, what if analysis, goal seek. I want to double my money every three years. So what will be the realistic rate of interest that I should expect? Here you go. So if it is 26%, if it is 26% every year expectation which I can have from my own research, this is the quantum of money which I can expect to make. 20, 40, 80, 160. 320, 640, 1280, 2560, 5120, 100 crore plus. This is realistically possible. We have had uh, we have had situations when the returns have been much more than that also. But uh, uh, if we do our research well, if we are prudent enough well. 
these are not unheard of numbers and just because i'm you know you're watching this videos it doesn't mean that i have to say all the good things or the cushy things uh, uh, to, to ensure that you know uh, that, that, that you are glued to the stock markets of course it's, it's there's a risk involved as well but if you are a little more severe if you are a little more uh, uh, you know understanding the companies over a period of time this is a realistic return which is possible which we have of course elaborated much in much more detail in our uh, stock market visit program that we have Okay, so you can at broad level try to understand the uh, the impact that can happen from the power of stock markets and the power of compounding over a period of time. Right. So I've just told you the quantum of money that you can make and you can expect and this is realistically possible. 100 crore plus is equivalent to the top one percentile of the people and this is realistic right so i'll wind up this video and i'll see you in the next video when we are going to discuss about the income statement the cash flows and the balance sheet if you like this video press on the subscribe button below or just like it thank you